Here. Can I give you one of these? Hi, ma'am. Hi there. My name's Betty Irwin. Hi, Betty. Oh, hey, I, I told this young man here I've picketed abortion clinics before <laughs> he was ever born. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job. But yeah. anyway, I want to know what's the problem. I called them. I called Abigail, the receptionist, and asked her. I said, oh, why are these people picketing the church? And she said, oh, I don't know. Maybe they think we're not doing enough. And I said, well, what do you mean? And she she couldn't answer me, so I'm asking you. Yeah. What is it you're wanting these people to do? Well, what happens is, is Christians in Texas yes. have a good moral opinion. Yes. Right? Like, if you ask them, should abortion be legal? They'll be like, yes. Mm -hmm. Is abortion bad? Yes. Mm -hmm. The orphans that are in Texas that need to be adopted, should they be adopted? Yes. Mm -hmm. They should be, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees to that. But nobody's doing what it takes to get it done. <laughs> like, we should do... Like, in Texas, there's 13,000 kids, like Joe here, who were in the foster care system waiting to be adopted. Right? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. 30,000 churches, 70,000 pastors in yeah. Texas. Why are these kids sitting in foster care rotting? Because nobody cares. Because nobody cares, right. We adopted six, right? And we can't adopt anymore. But we can, like, exhort, like the Bible says, exhort daily right. one another right. to love and good deeds, right? So we do this almost daily, right? So what we say is stop going to a country club. Like you can go to a country <laughs> club if you want to, but adopt the kids. Yeah. You can you can go to a country club and hear a beautiful production sermon. You can do that, yeah. but make abortion illegal. Like whatever we don't do for the least of these, we're not doing for Christ, right? No. So just giving to a crisis pregnancy center or just preaching, because the Bible says, they speak with their tongues but their hearts are far from me because God doesn't want our praises he doesn't want our worship he doesn't want our sacrifice what he says is first bring mercy and justice to the land and then your worship well mm -hmm. of course you and I are, I'm sure that you know I was at First Baptist Dallas 54 years and they ran me away with their contemporary music the music here is beautiful I drive an hour to get here on Sundays just so I can have a, a certain mindset to even hear the Word of God. But anyway, um, these are the end times. Yeah. I know you understand yeah. that. And America's going down. Our culture is, is gone. And it's because we've forsaken the true living God. That is true. We've turned our backs on Him. That's true. And because of Him, I think Houston, Texas was a judgment. I think everything that happens to this nation right now get his people not the pagan not the drug right. not the people that don't know jesus but trying to get his people to wake up right and be salt be, be light, light and be righteousness right. in this culture defend the innocent that's hold back we, those being led to slaughter that's why you we're know? in the mess we're in yeah the whole thing like not just the hurricanes and stuff but like death and crime and homosexuality all that's right. like a judgment on our land well, right because we oppose god right. so um yeah. but that's why we go to Let me have that. does it have a name yeah. or phone number yeah maybe? yeah you can contact us there on the website oh, wait, don't you have any i don't i don't yeah have a you got a pen i'll give you my cell phone number yeah and we do home church well we tell me what i can do here I okay want to try to if you event. yeah um if you can try to get a meeting for us you know um todd t-o-d-d bullis b-u-l-l-i-s and my telephone number is 805 404 4450 I'm Betty Irwin, and if you hey, ever Betty. get a call, where is this? Are you from? Well, I, we moved here five years ago from California. Oh, really? So. Well, welcome to Texas. Thank you, man. I'm a native Dallasite. I was born and raised here. And that I'm at the awesome. end of my 82nd year, and I, uh, 81st year, fixing to start on 82. But I want to tell you, you know who Carol Everett is. Hmm. You don't know? Well, no, you're not from Texas. She, she, uh, either worked in it's been years ago um, but she either worked or owned an abortion clinic and she got saved and she's written a book two books I think but man I tell you I've, I've stood for hours and hours and hours and hours in front of abortion clinics uh, mm -hmm. and I don't know 
God knows our hearts. Right. And he knows that we care about these babies. Mm -hmm. But we can only do so much. Right. And so I'll be praying for you and your people. Right. Thank you, ma'am. That are taking a stand for righteousness. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, uh, I'm fixing to go and have lunch with a friend that's lost. And her name is Elaine, and I ask you to pray for oh, the well. Lord to use me. I've witnessed to that woman for about 10 years, and she's 90, and she's losing her memory. And Give I it, just ask the yeah. Lord today to let me be able to get through to her one more time. Yeah. I know everybody's not going to be saved, but yeah. everybody I know, I want them to be saved. Yeah. <laughs> people will come in contact with you because you are salt and light, you know. And we're not mad at, at these people. We're not no. protesting them. No. But we're just saying there's babies do being something. slaughtered and we yeah. can do, do something. something. Like, well, last year they were saying that there's 1,500, this was last year, 1,500 homeless teenagers in Frisco, Texas. The most affluent city in north central Texas. There's 1,500 homeless teenagers. Yeah. That's a shame and a disgrace. Yeah. Well, just like in foster care, 13,000 kids, we have 70,000 pastors, 13,000 kids are waiting to be adopted, but nobody wants them because they're not babies. And it's like, Joe, we adopted out of foster care at like yeah. 13 years old. And he's yeah. a great kid. Yes. And God loves yes. him as much as any born child from well, parents that go to this church yes. or any other yes. church, yes. you know? Yes. yes. So. Well, I'm sorry to take your time, but last Sunday, I said, you know, I got to talk to these people. And then I called the church and asked what their problem was. Uh, and Yeah, they just turned the sprinklers on us. We've been here for five weeks, and they just figured out, hey, well, maybe if we turn the sprinklers on them, they'll leave. <laughs> so we're not your enemy. No. You know? like, And they don't come out and talk to us. They don't come out and, like, you know, they told us they'd call the police when we come on their property, you know? And it's like... Yeah. Look, we're not like, we're not mad or crazy, you well, know? We're not Black Lives Matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All lives matter, you know? Like, yeah, well, that's what I, that's what I say. But yeah. anyway, this is a very affluent church. Yeah. Very affluent. Yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm a widow. My sweetheart was killed in a hospital 14 years ago. And I know what it is to survive. I know what it is to struggle. And um, it's going to be difficult to, these people like not to make waves, they like for everything to right. be nice and calm and happy. Yeah. And I'm used to strong preaching about sin and hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, come to our come to our house on uh, Sunday night. We eat together, and then we talk about the Word of God yeah. and how we're supposed to apply the Word of God. Yeah. So, like, you'll get my seven-year-old go. Well, what, what what does it mean that there's a even the dogs get scraps from the table? Like, I don't. What is he talking about? You know, <laughs> and we all talk about it. You know, right. and it's right. awesome. So, do you live here in Frisco? A uh, little Elm. Oh, I don't know where that's at. It's right next door. <laughs> it's like right over there. It's not far. Yeah. A few minutes. Well, I but... live in Southwest Mesquite, so I'm, oh, okay. a, I'm a fur piece from here. But yeah. uh, it's a blessing to see you all. Thank you. And don't get discouraged. I'll be no. praying for you. You just do the Lord's. Just do what the Lord says. My wife's right over there talking with some people right now, yeah. but I would love to have her meet you. Yeah. Know? Well, mm -hmm. my name's Betty Irwin. Yeah. All right, Betty. And again, I've been trying to get out in this end of the country because I can't. I like to try to have an influence on people. Well, I can't have much of an influence an hour away from here. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. the Lord keeps not letting me have a, a place to live. I've, had, I've lived on three quarters of an acre for 59 years. And um, they're not going to hem me up in an apartment anywhere. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, been a joy to meet you. It's been a joy God to meet you too, you. Betty. Yeah. And take courage. Oh, yeah. We're, I mean, this is solemn work, you know, but man, to see what God does. And yeah. like, he'll actually, like, I was talking to one guy, he, came, he looked like he was going to try to beat me up. And after I got done talking to him, he's like, I agree 100% with you. And I, we don't do, you know, we don't do anything. You're right, you know, and that's awesome, <laughs> you know. So, and God is, He is so good, like what He's done in our lives. We adopted six kids out of foster care, we can't adopt anymore, right. but we can, like, 
ask people why they're not doing it. Because people, most people adopt because they want bigger families or they want a family. Right. But we need to adopt because the kids need loving homes. Yes. And we're Christians. Yes. You know, yes. so. I used to, years ago, my husband and I, we used to participate in Lester Roloff's ministry down in Corpus Christi, Texas. And he had homes for uh, boys and girls that owned drugs, girls pregnant, you know, whatever. Uh -huh. And then he had a home for drunk alcoholics and just you know there's a ministry for God's people to have in the culture around them right my daddy used to say I'd rather see a sermon anytime than to hear one yeah because daddy liked to watch the way people lived he said right. I can tell you whether they know Jesus or not by the right. way they live and the yeah. way they react to things so yeah. I've taken too much of your time <laughs> right. but anyway right, buddy. thank you, you. Take care. God bless thank you for your number and I'll be yeah. praying for you yeah, call maybe too. Me, maybe if you come out and hold signs, I'll take a picture of it and say a Chuck Swindoll member of the church came out and I'm held signs. Member of this church. I just uh. go here because the music. I still belong to W.A. Christmas. Palace. <laughs> All right. Well, God bless you. you All take right. Care. Bye bye. Bye.